Good morning students. Welcome back to session 13 of linear transformation classes. So in this class you will study what is meant by an Hermitian linear transformation, unitary linear transformations and normal linear transformations and results based on these topics. Okay. First let us consider this result. Okay. So here V is always denotes the finite dimensional inner product space over the complex field over the complex field. So first let us take this result. So the transformation T belongs to A of V then T is a zero transformation if and only if if and only if inner product of T of V comma V is zero for every V belongs to V. That means if T belongs to A of V then T is zero transformation if and only if inner product of T of V comma V is zero. First suppose that T is a zero transformation means T is equal to zero. Now zero transformation always carries every vector to zero accordingly T of V is zero for every V belongs to V. This implies inner product of T of V comma V is equal to zero comma V. Zero comma V is always zero. This holds for every vector V belongs to V. Thus we have proved T is 0 if and only if implies T of V comma V is 0. Conversely, suppose that inner product of T of V comma V is 0 for every V belongs to V, we will show T itself is 0. For this, you consider V to be the sum of two vectors U and W, say V is equal to U plus W, where U and W are vectors of V itself. Then, inner product of T of u plus w because we have assumed that T of v comma v is 0. Since v is equal to u plus w that belongs to v, this assumption holds good for u plus w also. Accordingly, inner product of T of u plus w comma u plus w is 0. So, since T is linear, this can be written as T of u plus T of w comma u, u plus w is equal to 0. You expand this inner product. This gives T of u comma inner product of T of u comma u plus inner product of T of u comma w plus inner product of T of w comma u plus inner product of T of w comma w is 0. But they were given inner product of T of u comma u is 0. Accordingly, T of u comma u is 0, inner product of T of w comma w T of w is 0. Therefore, the remaining terms are inner product of T of u comma w plus T of w comma u is 0. You call by the number 1. Now in 1 you replace w by i w because if w belongs to v, i into w is also belongs to v because we have taken v to be inner product space over the complex field. It here alpha is nothing but i means if v belongs to v, alpha into v also belongs to v by the definition of an vector space. Okay. So, I can replace W by IW in the expression 1. So, that we get inner product of T of U comma I into W plus T of IW comma U is equal to 0. If you take I outside, it becomes with my negative sign. So, minus I of T of U comma W plus I times into T of W comma U is 0. So, dividing throughout by I or in other words, so this gives in minus, minus inner product of T of u comma w plus T of w comma u is 0. You call by the number 2. Now you add 1 and 2. If you add 1 and 2, this first term get cancelled. Therefore, you get 2 times T of w comma u is 0. You get 2 times T of w comma u is 0. So, I taken this. Then what will happen? So, T of w comma u is 0. Now, 2 cannot be 0. This implies that T of w comma u is 0 for every u comma w belongs to v. Now, this holds for every u vectors u comma w belongs to v means I can replace w by v itself and u by T of v because T of v is an element of v itself because T is a mapping from v to v. So, therefore, inner product of T of V comma T of V is 0 for every V belongs to V. Now, inner product of T of V comma T of V is 0 means T of V itself is 0. 
t of v itself 0 for every v belongs to v implies what? So, t is 0 because 0 is the only transformation which carries every vector to 0. Thus, we have proved t inner product of t of v comma v is 0 implies t itself is 0. Okay, I understand this. Now, you can as s you can say that the lemma may not hold true in the real case. Okay, as, as we see if v is r2 then every vector v in v can be written as v is the ordered pair alpha comma beta where alpha comma beta are what? Alpha comma beta are reals where alpha comma beta are reals. So, now I will define the mapping t, of, t from r2 to r2 by t of v is equal to t of alpha beta is equal to minus alpha minus beta alpha it is like a reflection mapping ok t of alpha beta is equal to minus beta alpha ok. Now, I will define inner product on r2 this is a standard inner product on r2 inner product of any two vectors alpha alpha 1 beta 1 alpha 2 beta is 2 is equal to alpha 1 alpha 2 plus beta 1 beta 2 ok. Now, t is not 0 why because alpha is not 0 beta is not 0 because we have taken this is a non-zero vector therefore t of alpha beta is also not 0 ok. But t of v comma v is what t of v is inner product of t of alpha beta means minus beta comma alpha v is alpha comma beta. So, this will be minus beta into alpha plus alpha into beta by the definition of an inner product but this will be equal to 0 this will be equal to 0 or answer now here v is an though v is a non-zero element alpha t of v comma v here although sorry although t is not 0 not the 0 transformation but inner product of t of v comma v is 0. So, the above result may not holds true in the real case in the real case. So, now so I will start with the definition of <coughs> the things which we are discussing in this section. So, the linear transformation the linear transformation t belongs to a of v is said to be unitary the linear transformation t belongs to a of v is said to be unitary if the inner product of t of u comma t of v is same as inner product of u comma v observe this the transformation t belongs to a of v is said to be unitary transformation if inner product of t of u comma t of v is same as inner product of u comma v this holds for every vectors u comma v belongs to v ok. Now, this unitary transformation is the is the one which preserves all the structures of v the unitary transformation is the one which preserves all the structures of v its addition multiplication of scalars and the inner products. It preserves length also because norm of v can be written as inner product of v comma v power of 1 by 2 or under root. So, this is equal to under root of inner product of v comma v is what t of v comma t of v. So, this is nothing but norm of t of v. So, that norm of v is same as norm of t of v means t preserves the norms. Therefore, the unitary transformation the unitary transformation preserves the norms means it preserves the lengths ok length of a vector. Now, look here. So, this theorem says if t belongs to a of v is unitary if and only if norm of t of v is same as norm of v. If t is an unitary transformation then norm of t of v is same as norm of v this holds for every vectors v in v ok. First suppose t is unitary t is unitary means then by definition inner product of t of u comma t of v is inner product of u comma v. Now, this implies inner product of t of v comma t of v is equal to v comma v by taking u is equal to v. So, this implies norm of t of v whole square is equal to norm of v whole square by definition. This implies norm of t of v same as norm of v for every v belongs to v. Thus, we have assumed that t is unitary and we have shown that norm of t of v is same as norm of v for every v belongs to v ok. Conversely, conversely you take uh, norm of t of v is equal to norm of v for every v belongs to v. This implies by definition inner product of t of v comma t of v is equal to v comma v. I will take again in the as in the previous uh, result 
I'll take v is equal to u plus w where u and w are elements of v. Then the above expression gives inner product of t of u plus w comma t of u plus w is equal to inner product of u plus w comma u plus w. You expand the inner product. This gives inner product of t of u comma t of u plus t of u comma t of w plus t of w comma t of u plus t of w comma t of w is equal to inner product of u comma u u comma w plus the inner product of w comma u plus inner product of w comma w. So now t of u comma u is t of u comma t of u is u comma u therefore these two get cancelled t of w comma t of w is w comma w these two get cancelled so the remaining terms are inner product of t of u comma t of w plus t of w comma t of u is equal to inner product of u comma w plus w comma u you call by the number 1. Now again you replace w by i w in 1 we get okay so t of u comma t of i w is equal to inner product of t of i w comma t of u is equal to inner product of u comma i w plus i w comma u. So this implies since i is on the right hand side so it comes with the negative sign conjugate minus i into t of u comma t of w plus i times into t of u w comma t of u is equal to minus i times into u comma w plus i times into w comma u. So this implies dividing throughout by i this gives this implies inner product of t of u comma t of w plus t of w comma t of u is equal to minus inner product of u comma w plus inner product w comma u you call by the number 2 now you add 1 and 2 if you add 1 and 2 if we get 2 times inner product of t of w comma t of u is equal to 2 times inner product of w comma u this implies inner product of t of w comma t of u is equal to w comma u this means by definition t is a unitary transformation Thus, we have assumed that norm of T of V is equal to norm of V and we have proved that T is a unitary transformation, unitary transformation, okay. Look here. Next, suppose T is unitary, then it happens only if and only if T maps an orthonormal basis of V into an orthonormal basis of V means the unitary transformation maps orthonormal basis into orthonormal basis or in the words if it map, map if a transformation maps orthonormal basis into orthonormal basis then it becomes a unitary transformation okay first let us assume that t is a unitary transformation now you, t is a unitary transformation and you assume that the dimension of the vector space b n okay and let you know that every inner product space has a orthonormal basis therefore I will take v1, v2, etc., vn be an orthonormal basis of the inner product space v. This is an orthonormal basis means what? Inner product of v i comma v j is 0 if i is equal to if i is not equal to j and is 1 if i is equal to j. Now you consider the inner product of t of v i comma t of v j. Now t of v i comma v j is what? Since t is unitary transformation, this becomes inner product of v i comma v j. But inner product of v i comma v j accordingly this is 0 if i is not equal to j 1 if i is equal to j. Thus inner product of t of v i comma t of v j is 0 if i is not equal to j 1 if i is equal to j giving this vectors t of v1, t of v2 etc, t of v n an orthonormal basis. Okay, and understand this. So, if t is a unitary transformation then it maps orthonormal basis v1 v2 etc vn into the orthonormal basis t of v1 t of v2 etc t of vn okay conversely conversely you assume that t maps an orthonormal basis of v into an orthonormal basis of v we will show t is unitary t is unitary now suppose now you consider any two vectors say u can u and v be any two vectors of v now as v1 v2 etc vn is a basis then each of the vectors can be written as a linear combination of basis elements accordingly you can written as summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i vi 
and we can written as summation j is equal to 1 to n beta j vj. Now you consider the inner product of these two vectors u comma u and v. So inner product of u and v is equal to inner product of u means summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i v i and v, v is summation j is equal to 1 to n beta j v j. So since v i and v j are orthonormal this gives alpha i v i beta i v i. This implies alpha i into beta i bar into v i comma v i. v i comma v i is 1 therefore this gives alpha i into beta i bar means beta i bar means complex conjugate of beta i. So you call the by the number 1. Now you consider the inner product of t of u comma t of v. So t of u means what u is this one. t of u becomes what t of u is since t is linear summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i into t of v i. So directly I will write t of u comma t of v is summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i into t of v i. Similarly summation j is equal to 1 to n beta j into t of v j. So since t maps orthonormal basis into orthonormal basis means t, since t of v i's are also orthonormal it gives some this is equal to alpha i into t of v i beta i into t of v i all other terms gets 0. So this implies alpha i into beta i bar beta i are taken out into t of v i comma t of y, v i but t of v i comma t of v i is 1 therefore this gives alpha i into beta i bar thus t of u comma t of v is alpha i into beta i bar you call by the number 2 one says u comma v is in the product of u comma v is this one alpha i into beta i bar and 2 says in the product of t of u comma t of v is alpha i into beta i bar therefore from 1 and 2 you can conclude that inner product of t of u comma t of v is inner product of u comma v for every vectors u comma v belongs to v then by definition t is a unitary transformation thus t is belongs to a of v is unitary if and only if it maps an orthonormal basis of v into an orthonormal basis of v okay next let t belongs to a of v let t belongs to a of v then given any vector v in v there exists an element w in v depending on that vector v and the transformation t such that t of w comma v sorry such that t of u comma v is equal to u comma w t of u comma v is u comma w for every u belongs to v for every u belongs to v this element w is uniquely determined by v and t this element w is uniquely determined by v and t so let us prove this now so let u1 u2 etc un be an orthonormal basis of v define the vector w as define the vector w as summation i is equal to 1 to n inner product of t of u i comma v conjugate into u i this is a linear combination of u i's therefore it is a definitely w is an element of v only okay w is an element of v only you can write then w belongs to v then w belongs to v now you consider inner product of u i comma w so this is equal to inner product of u i comma w means summation j is equal to 1 to n inner product of t of u j comma v conjugate comma u j comma t of v comma this is u j okay under the inner product this implies u i comma because u i sir orthonormal means this gives only u i comma inner product of t of u i comma v conjugate into u i this is equal to so this term this is like alpha alpha bar it can be taken out means it becomes alpha means t of u i comma v into inner product of u i comma u i inner product of u i comma u i is 1 therefore this gives inner product of t, t of u i comma v they, thus u inner product of u i comma w is equal to t of u i comma v now look here now any vector now any vector u belongs to v implies u is a linear combination of basis elements and therefore u can be written as alpha 1 u 1 alpha 2 u 2 etc alpha n u n 
Now, inner product of u, w, u, w is equal to u means summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i u i, w. This is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i into inner product of u i, w. So, this is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i into u i, w you can be written as u i, w is this is u i, w is what t of u i, v. So, I write t of u i, v. So, this is equal to now I will bring the scalars inside. This implies inner product of t of summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i u i, v. Alpha u i means u this is equal to t of u, v. Thus, t of u, v is equal to u, w. t of u, v is equal to u, w which is the required thing. Okay? For a very u belongs to v. Thus, we have proved the required thing. Now, we need to show the existence of w is unique. This element w is a unique element of v. So, suppose there exist two vectors say w1 and w2 satisfying the given property. That means, t of u, v is equal to u, w1 as well as t of u, v is equal to u, w2. Then what will happen? u, w1 is equal to u, w2. This implies inner product of u, w1 minus w2 is equal to 0. This is by definition of an inner product. Now, this holds for every vector. u means I can take u as w1 minus w2 itself because it is an element of v. Therefore, inner product of w1 minus w2 comma w1 minus w2 is equal to 0. But inner product of x comma x is 0 means x itself is 0. Accordingly, w1 minus w2 is equal to 0 or w1 is equal to w2 means the, the such w, the existed w is unique. w is unique. Okay? Now, look here. Suppose, V is a finite dimensional inner product space over the field of complex numbers and T is an element of A of V. Now, you define the transformation T star from V to V itself. You define the transformation T star from V to V by T of U comma V is equal to T of U comma V is equal to inner product of u comma inner product of u comma t star of v inner product of t of u comma is equal to u comma t star of v for a very uv belongs to v this operator t star from v to v is called the adjoint of t or simply hermitian adjoint of t t star is called the hermitian adjoint of t okay now that as i'll define in the next <coughs> section uh, t is hermitian if t is equal to t star okay so before that say let us take up this result suppose v1 e2 etc vn is an orthonormal basis of the vector space v and if the matrix of t belongs to a of v is alpha ij the matrix of the transformation t is alpha ij then the matrix of the adjoint t star in the same basis t star in the same basis is alpha j i bar if T has matrix alpha ij, then the matrix of T star is alpha j i bar means transpose, we will take transpose of the matrix and conjugate, okay, conjugate transpose of alpha ij is the matrix of T star. Let us prove this now, okay. So, suppose given matrix of T is alpha ij, let the matrix of T star be beta ij we will show beta ij is nothing but alpha j i bar ok now matrix of t is alpha ij means one of the s of one of the s so say vectors t of v i can be written as alpha i 1 v 1 alpha i 2 v 2 etc alpha i i v i etc alpha i n v n so from this system of equations only you get the matrix right so similarly matrix of T star is beta ij implies T star of v i. T star of v i is beta i1 v1, beta i2 v2, etc. Beta i n v n. Beta i n v n. Now you consider the vector beta ij. Beta ij can be written as according to this. How beta ij comes? T 
टी स्टार आफ वि काम विजे इफ यू कंसिडर टी स्टार आफ वि काम विजे बीटा जे कम्स औट सो टी स्टार आफ वि काम विजे सो दिस इज टू विजे काम टी स्टार आफ वि सो कांजुगेट बिका एक्स वै इज ईक्वल टू वै एक्स बार सो दिस इज ईक्वल टू टी आफ विजे एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म दिस टी टू इयर इट बिकम्स टी सो टी आफ विजे काम वि कांजुगेट This is equal to V I comma T of V J. If you remove the conjugate, it becomes V I comma T of V J. But according to this, T of V J is what? T of V J is alpha J one V one, alpha J two V two, etc. Alpha J n V n. Okay. Therefore, if you substitute these values in beta I J, it gives beta I J becomes V I beta I J is V I comma T of V J. So V I comma V J is alpha j1 v1 alpha j2 v2 and so on alpha jn vn so if you expand this you get vi comma vi comma v1 is 0 vi comma v2 is 0 etc only vi comma vi 1 therefore alpha vi comma alpha ji vi is equal to vi comma vi inner product of vi comma vi is 1 therefore alpha ji bar because it is in the second term so it comes out with conjugate alpha ji bar therefore beta ij is what alpha ji bar therefore matrix of t star is alpha ji bar if matrix of t is alpha ij then matrix of t star in the same basis is alpha ji bar okay now if t is an hermitian operator hermitian adjoint or adjoint operator then the following results holds true t star whole star adjoint of an adjoint is T itself and S plus T whole star is S star plus T star and lambda into S whole star is lambda bar into S star. It comes out with complex conjugate. Okay and fourth one is S into T whole star is T star into S star. These two are very important. S into T whole star is T star into S star. For a very S and T belongs to E of V and lambda is a scalar which lies in the field F. Okay. Now you take up S. Suppose the map T belongs to E of V is unitary, then T is invertible, and T is invertible means T star is equal to T inverse. T is star is equal to T inverse so that T into T star is I, as well as T star into T is also I. T star into T is I, as well as T star into T is I. So now, suppose T belongs to E of V is unitary. Then what will happen? By definition, inner product of T of U comma T of V is inner product of U comma V for every U comma V belongs to V. So this implies U comma. This is T of U comma T of V can be written as U comma. T star of I'll transform this T to this side means it becomes T star. U comma T star into T of V is equal to S T of U comma T of V that is equal to U comma V. Now you observe this first and third term. U comma T star into T of V is U comma V means what? T into T star into T is equal to I. T, T star into T is equal to I. Similarly, you can show that T into T star is I. Therefore. Okay, t into t star is i as well as t star into t. On the other hand, if we assume that t into t star is i, then inner product of u comma v can be written as u comma t into t star as well as t star into t is i means what will happen? I can write v means i into v because i of v is v itself. So in place of i, I can write t star into t. Now you transform this t star onto the left, it becomes t of u comma t of v. Thus T of u comma T of v is u comma v, giving T as unitary transformation. Therefore, T is unitary if and only if T into T star is i as well as T star into T is also i. So this can be taken as a definition for a unitary transformation itself. Therefore, in future, whenever we say T is unitary, it happens one day if and only if T into T star is i as well as T star into T is i. This may be taken as definition for unitary transformation. Now, so suppose T belongs to E of V is self-adjoint or Hermitian. The transformation T belongs to E of V is called self-adjoint or Hermitian if 
T star is same as T. And so now the Hermitian transformation or self adjoint transformation if T is star is equal to T. Now if T star is equal to minus T, if T star is equal to minus T, we call T as skew Hermitian. It is called Hermitian if T is equal to T star and skew Hermitian if T star is equal to minus T. Hermitian and skew Hermitian. Now given any uh, transformation S belongs to E of V, S can always be written as S plus S star by 2 plus I times into S minus S star by 2I. If you simplify you get S itself. So any transformation can be written as S plus S star by 2 plus I into S minus S star by 2. And you can see that S plus S star by 2 and S minus S star by 2i there are animation means this whole star is equal to itself this whole star is equal to itself. So you can see that these two are animation therefore you can declare that S is equal to this you call it as A and this call it as B A plus IB S is equal to A plus IB where A and B are animation A and B are animation and on this. So any transformation can be written like this, like this, uh, where A e and B are Hermitian, where A e and B are Hermitian. Okay. So I'll stop for this class and I'll continue next class. Thank you for listening.